Welcome back. In this lecture, I plan to start a new module which is about other chain polymerization methods, but I uh, had to take about first 10 minutes to complete uh, the remainder of the last module which is about radical chain polymerization. I was talking about wrapped uh, polymerization in the last lecture. In this lecture, as I said, this is a reversible transfer by which uh, we actually can achieve the radical polymerization in a controlled fashion. So, in this case, the, the original, the, uh, the initial, the radicals are generated in a conventional initiator fashions like peroxides and AIBN and we in presence of a chain transfer agent. Now, typically the concentration or number of this chain transfer agent is much higher compared to the initiator molecule. So, as soon as this initiator molecules are generated, it will react with this raft agent and form a dormant species and which can actually further fragment to produce this A dot, which is can further basically react with the monomers and take part in polymerization reaction. So, the fundamental difference between this wrapped polymerization and say NMP and ATRP is that the radicals which we, this is not the original radical, but this is the radicals generated because of the transfer process. Now, in this case, this radical is not stable radical, not unreactive radical like the other two example. This can take part polymerization. So, this can actually react with monomers and propagate the polymer chain and also it can take part in a and do, do this reaction with the chain transfer agent or raft agent in a reversible way. So, we explained how this name came the radical addition fragmentation transfer because it consists of addition, fragmentation and in this way chain original radical is getting transferred and producing a new radical. So, if we at any point of time after the initial initial time when all the this raft agent are consumed, we have a polymeric propagating radical and when it reacts with a raft agent form this uh, dormant intermediate radical which fragments and produced a new radical which again can react with monomers to produce uh, again basically take part in um, reaction and produce a uh, propagating step and this continues and we can basically generate longer and longer polymer chain. Now, because the number of wrapped regions originally was added much more than the initiator molecules. So, the initiator, the number of radicals which produce their form, the original number of radicals which are produced there from the initial radical species, but the number of chains which are getting pro produced in this case, they are mainly dominated by the number of wrapped agent present in this medium. So, initially addition fragmentation chain transfer to wrapped agent dominates, but as the wrapped agent is consumed, the concentration of polymeric wrapped species grows and later this basically the polymeric wrapped agent species which contributes and eventually become the only the diastereoester species present in the medium. So, the degree of polymerization in this case is given by same the fractional, fractional monomer conversion in this case C and C prime is fractional raft agent conversion and C double prime is a fractional initiator con con conversion. So, if all the monomers are consumed reacted then C is 1, if all the 
raptogens are consumed which is the case most of the raptogens are anyway consumed within first few percentage of monomer conversion. So, C prime is almost every case is, is 1 and this is this A is the fraction of polymer chains which are basically produced by coupling reaction. Now, just look at this expression in this case this is the denominator is giving the number of polymer chains which are produced. Now, this is the number of polymer chains which have the wrapped agent at one end basically those are the leaving chains. So, you can use these chains containing the wrapped agent at the end for making for the reaction for the uh, like making block copolymer and so on. But there will be inherently some bimolecular reaction between the propagating radical which will generate dead chains like a conventional radical polymerization and obviously the chain length which will be depend on the type of coupling reaction or combination uh, like uh, the termination is by coupling and combination or by disproportional reaction and A is the fraction of dead chains which are produced by coupling or combination reaction. So, and as you said the left agents are consumed in the within the first few percentage of monomer con conversion. So, P prime is 1 and because we are using the initial wrap percentage concentration is higher then this term is much higher than this term. So, basically this is higher than this. So, this is much higher than the second term. So, we can actually get this uh, this is how we can basically get the the degree of polymerization. So, if we consumed all the monomers then it will be just initial monomer concentration by the initial wrapped agent concentration. Now, in this case unlike NMP or SFRP or ATRP processes where the effective radical concentration during polymerization was much low. So, actually the reaction rate is also low, but in this case the effective radical concentration is same throughout the process which is given by the original concentration of radicals which is produced from the initiator molecules. But because the radicals are more effective or more reactive towards the chain transfer agents which are the raft agents in this case they are basically not participating or the likelihood that a propagating radical will participate in a bimolecular radical radical termination reaction is much lower compared to the possibility of this propagating radical reacting with a chain transfer agent and transferring the chain and as a result we basically suppress the inherent termination reaction in this way and as a result rate does not change too much compared to a radical conventional radical polymerization process. And at the end we can use this uh, to produce block graph star copolymer like as example is shown as ATRP. Now, what we will do now just quickly go through this is just informative purpose in next 3 4 minute I will quickly run through few examples of polymers which are synthesized using radical chain polymerization. It, it is not necessary you to remember this uh, data, but this is just for completion uh, of this uh, module. Uh, so, basically the one of the example is polyethylene especially the low molecular weight uh, low density polyethylene are produced by this radical chain transfer process and uh, these are branched little bit of branched uh, polymers. So, crystallinity is low and uh, Tg data is given by this process. Polyethylene as you saw the, the property of this uh, polyethylene is this uh, 
good combination of strength, flexibility, impact resistance and main flow behavior and mostly used as a film like packaging, household, household use bags, pouches, wraps, foot clothes and these are the some of the trade names by which it is sold in the market. Another polymer which is used using this or synthesized using this radical chain polymerization is polystyrene and generally by a continuous process and some cases by suspension processes to produce the beads and if we present do is present of cross linker then we can generate cross linked polystyrene beads and some data regarding this polymer is given here. And this is a rigid plastic material completely amorphous, it has good strength and dimensional stability and good resistance to aqueous base and acids. This poor because of the aromatic groups it has poor weatherability and it is uh, also not good resistant to hydrocarbon solvent. And these are some, some use for uh, polystyrene uh, as uh, is shown here as I also told that you do not need to remember all this information, this is just for to, uh, to basically um, go through this and uh, if required you can basically know how or in which application polystyrene polymers are used. And some of the trade name by which polystyrene is sold are given here. Other polymers like polyvinyl chlor chloride and the some property of the polymer and the applications are also shown here. Especially these black pipes uh, for foam they are made up of polyvinyl chloride and they are also used for floating and packaging and all things and these are the some of the trade names by which polyvinyl chlorides are sold. The other members in the vinyl family like polyacryl methacrylate and uh, other families are also there. One of the important polymer is polymethyl methacrylate and some of the properties are given here and they are used for septic glasses, indoor outlet lighting applications because this is a very low RI, so transparency is much higher as a result the polymethyl methacrylate are used for optical application where transparency or clarity is needed. Some of the common trade names are like flux, plexiglass, leucite and so on. The other members are also given here. Some of them are like acrylamide, uh, acrylonitrile, they are also have some specific application. Now also one just uh, last uh, thing that we can use this non -rad, uh, radical polymerization make, to make cross linked uh, polymers like if we have a uh, one monomer like this and if we have a another monomer Y uh, like this then if we mix this together and polymerize this is probably at a lower mole percentage then we can get a polymer with X, X and sometime with Y and So basically we can make cross linked or network polymer by just adding one multifunctional polymer like in this case a, we are taking two with two double bonds. So basically they can cross link between two uh, resulting polymer chain and make a network polymer or gel. And some of the examples of this type of cross linker is, is given below. This is very common divinyl benzene which are used for uh, cross-linking styrene, poly, st uh, styrene uh, polystyrene molecules. So basically when you cross-link you should basically try to match the functionality like divinyl benzene can be used to cross-link polystyrene or a say acrylamide, this ac bis acrylamide can be used to polymerize a, a cross-link acrylamide polymers or polyacrylamide, this acrylate, methacrylate group can be uh, used to polymer or cross-link poly 
methyl methacrylate type polymers. So, this is just for your understanding that we can use this uh, multifunctional with the, or, or the monomers with two monomer group or three monomer uh, three di, uh, double bond or two double bonds which can actually cross link between linear polymer chain and form network polymer. Now, we, what we will do we will move to new topic, uh, we will basically change the module where we will talk about uh, other methods of polymerization and as uh, these methods uh, are not that important commercially because they are not used as frequently as step growth polymerization and say radical chain polymerization. I will spend very uh, like a small amount of time for this uh, other polymerization techniques. For example, we will talk about ionic chain polymerization and as the name suggests, in this case instead of a radical which was used to initiate the radical chain polymerization, we have a ionic species which basically initiate the polymer chain. For a, for example, a cation or an anion. So, it could be a cation or an anion and this C i means counter ion. Unlike in case of radical, in case of ionic polymerization, we have always a counter ion associated with the active chain end or active, active part of the in the, uh, the, the polymer. So, we can use a ion as such like a cation or a anion or we can use a electron transfer process to generate a radical ion and from there we can actually get a bi radical which can uh, this is not bi radical this would be bi uh, instead of radical we will have a cation here and this case so basically by anion or by cation. So, we have M M plus plus and M M minus minus. So, the what is the fundamental difference of this type of ionic polymerization with the radical polymerization? In case of radical we have seen that there are inherent bi molecular termination step by reaction between two propagating radicals, but this inherent termination is not possible for a ionic polymerization because two cation or two anion cannot interact with themselves. We can like a living or RDRP polymerization, we can actually predecide the molecular weight in ionic polymerization. And again because the chain end will be anion or cation, we can actually functionalize the end of the polymer chain. So, there are in this polymerization there is a scope of generating functional group at the end of polymerization and the reactions are fast. Some features, general characteristics of ionic polymerization these are much more selective unlike radical polymerization. The number of monomers which we can polymerize using ionic polymerization is less because as we discussed earlier that to propagate a chain we need to stabilize the resulting active site. So, if you have a cation this y must be a electron donating group to stabilize this cation or if we have an anion then this Y should be a electron withdrawing group either by inductive effect or by resonance effect so that we can stabilize this active ion so that the polymerization can proceed. And we discussed earlier also the monomers which have basically electron withdrawing group either by inductive effect or by 
resonant effect like in these cases we can have anionic polymerization uh, for example if y is uh, the cor then this uh, anion can get stabilized by resonance so basically then this is possible and if this is a cation then y must be something which basically electron donating to stabilize this and which is happens if I have say OR type substitution uh, Y is OR then it can donate the lone pair on oxygen and stabilize this molecule. So in this case as we discussed earlier also if the Y having this type of substitution we can have anionic polymerization possible and if we have OR type substitution then cationic type polymerization possible and if you have substitution like phenyl or a another conjugation then because of resonance this type of monomer can basically participate in both anionic polymerization and cationic polymerization. So basically we know that is much more selective. So, the number of monomers we can participate in ionic polymerization is less compared to the number of monomers which can participate in radical polymerization. This is another very important feature is the effect of polarity of the solvent. Now, in this case because the propagating chain end is an anion. So, if I have a long polymer chain at the end we have a either an anion or a cation there is a counter ion associated with that. So, the polarity of the medium actually affect the reactivity of this chain N which is a ionic species. For example, this combination of the ion and its counter ion could be present in four such ways. One they can actually combine with each other form a covalent bond in that case obviously there is no ion ionic species present and the, the species is not reactive at all for carrying out further polymerization. Extreme end if we have a highly polar solvent then these two will be separated and they will form a free ion pair and in this case the reactivity of the chain N will be much higher because the electrophilicity or nucleophilicity depending upon who we are talking about a cation or a anion will be much higher because the charges the available charges are much free yeah, much more in this case. So, the activity for polymerization will be much higher in case of highly polar solvent. In there are two intermediate state where we have so basically this is where my uh, polarity increases, polarity of the solvent, polarity of solvent increases. So, we can have tight ion pair and we can have solvent, solvated ion pair or solvent separated ion pair. Now, as we understand this cannot carry out any initiation reaction or it cannot carry out any further polymerization where the reactivity of this is too fast and that actually gives lot of complication. It can do lot of side reaction because of the highly reactive ionic species. So, these two extremes are not recommended. So, generally ionic polymerization are not done on highly polar solvent or a very, very low polarity solvent these are done either in a low to moderate polarity solvent. So, they, they so that the ions the ionic chain ends are present either as a tied ion pair or a solvated ion pair. So, these two are the, the preferred uh, state of this ionic pair which are recommended for carrying out ionic polymerization and that happens for a 
uh, if we do the polymerization in low to moderate polarity solvent. So, basically low to moderate polar polarity solvent like THA ether or a mixed solvent like toluene THF they are used for uh, ionic polymerization. Nature of the reaction are as we discussed because this is an ionic reaction they are very fast they are, they are actually 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 6 times faster than radical chain polymerization because ionic species are much more reactive than radicals. And as we discussed the bimolecular termination reaction between the propagating species as in the case of radical chain polymerization they are absent in this case because two anion or two cation cannot interact with each other and do re for the reaction. And because these ionic species are very reactive they are very much susceptible to impurities like oxygen, carbon dioxide, water or any hydroxidated solvents are present in the medium. And there is a large effect of co-catalyst we will discuss uh, briefly in this uh, case and the polymerization is quite complex so kinetic data are often rep not reproducible so basically uh, is very difficult to generate a reproducible kinetic data for this uh, ionic reaction especially for cationic polymerization. If you compare between radical cation and anionic polymerization, anionic or ionic polymerizations are very susceptible to these impurities than radical polymerization because higher reactivity of the ionic groups. For example, if I have anion and there is a small amount of water present in medium, it can actually stop this or quench this anion and generate a hydroxide anion which are not reactive enough to proceed and basically react further and make a polymerization. So, reaction will basically stop here as if I if there are small amount of water is present in the medium it will basically kill this it will basically kill this uh, uh, propagating anion. Ionic polymerization is very sensitive to solvent polarity as we discussed and it is preferable to do a polymerization in low to moderate polarity. And ionic polymerization can be uh, carried out or may be carried out in ambient to lower temperature to avoid those side reactions. And as we said radical scavengers basically those which are radical scavengers they do not inhibit ionic uh, polymerization they actually inhibit radical polymerization this is obvious. And ionic polymerization can be easily uh, employed to make copolymer as uh, we can have a living chain ends which are ionic group. From a practical uh, aspect it is very difficult to carry out ionic polymerization because this is very very susceptible to the impurities present. So, basically we have to have all the reagents extremely pure otherwise there will be impurities and which will basically uh, kill the uh, resulting ionic species and the glassware should be cleaned rigorously and generally high vacuum techniques are used for this ionic polymerization and when you create inner atmosphere to remove oxygen and carbon dioxide or water from the medium we use generally use nitrogen and argon during reaction. So, in this case the nitrogen organ which are used to generate the inert atmosphere they must be very pure enough. So, that there is no impurity present in those gases as well. As a result commercial applications of this uh, specially anionic chain polymerization are uh, limited to making specialty copolymers and molecular basically molecular standard which are basically the mole polymer molecules which a very narrow, narrow poly dispersity. So, we will quickly go through the uh, two polymerization mechanism cationic polymerization where we basically have a nucleophile uh, electrophile which basically attacks the, the double bond and 
it can form a initiator molecule like this. And these are some of the monomers which can be polymerized using cationic polymerization. And typical initiators which are used are protonic acids like HCl H like H2 H2SO4 or HClO4 H3PO4 etcetera. But in these cases the molecular weight generators are not very high. This is not a very effective um, effective are not high. So, they are not basically effective initiator. So, the other initiator is Lewis acid. So, these are the typical Lewis acid which are used and in fact, if we use just pure this Lewis acid then also the reaction uh, is very low. For example, if we use BF3 as initiator then the uh, reaction does not happen. BF3 plus if we say if we have another monomer and if we have amo anhydrous then basically reaction is very slow does not happen. But if we add a co-catalyst BF3 plus water and this monomer then we have a very rapid reaction. So, in this case just Lewis acid is not enough to carry out the reaction we need a co-catalyst like being which are basically act as a protogen supplier of proton basically it gives a, a so it gives a complex type this and then this basically initiates the reaction cationic reaction. The chlorinated solvents are good for cationic polymerization and hydrocarbon are not good because the, the reason I explained that the polarity is so low that the, the ionic species cannot um, basically they form very tight ion pair or almost like covalent bond. So, the reactivity is very low. So, solvents like ethers and with some active hydrogen basically which can give um, hydrogen to the ionic species they are also not um, used in this uh, cationic polymerization process. So, this is the example of one cationic polymerization. So, this is the initiator as we expect. So, we can this is the initiation step and it is like the other radical chain polymerization we have a propagation step. Now, in this case inherently this two propagating cation cannot react with itself and terminate, but there are some chain transfer reaction may happen chain transfer with the monomer, chain transfer with the counter and or other solvent or some other chain transfer agent in the polymer they can actually participate in chain transfer process and can quench this cation and by the by doing this it can get terminated. So, in this case the difference is that with radical in case of radical there two radicals can react with themselves and terminate the chain, but in this case the cations inherently cannot react with themselves to terminate the chain, but because of the, the possibility of some other chain transfer reactions like to monomer or to counter and this can actually get terminated like one of the example are shown here. So, we have uh, one example of uh, uh, cationic polymer which is used for synthesize uh, uh, important polymer is like butyl rubber. In this case isobutylene is uh, polymerized with 5 percent of isoprene and in that case uh, AlCl3 uh, is used as a catalyst at minus uh, 150 uh, sorry 100 degree centigrade and low temperature actually minimize uh, the chain transfer reaction and produce polymers of p determined molecular weight and butyl rubber are elastomers with outstanding weatherability characteristic and have lowest air permeability uh, among all known elastomers. 
in anionic polymerization also have these three steps uh, initiator propag uh, initiation propagation and termination in initiation basically we have now a nucleophile which uh, um, initiate the polymer chains and we can give the other example we can give say examples of these uh, initiator molecules like uh, we can have say organometallic compound or we can have a electron transfer process electron transfer process for generating initiating a radical one very common is butyl lithium which is uh, used to polymerize styrene isoprene and this is uh, used for polymerizing methane metacrylate and which is another one example we can give which is a weak nickel file which is basically used for cyanoacrylate. So, these are the example uh, about the init anionic initiators and another example of this electron transfer force process where we can get radical anion and when we react with a styrene molecule it can actually generate a bi anion. So, we have now two species where we have two sides anionic groups. So, now you can actually propagate a anionic chain from both sides. So, basically we can generate polystyrene this side as well as this side. So, this is example where we have a bi anion so basically this species have two anionic groups so we can use this for polymerizing and making polymer chains from both the sides so polystyrene one side and polystyrene another side so example of anionic polymerization so synthesis of sbs styrene butyrene styrene thermoplastic elastomer so in this case we can use butyl lithium in cyclohexane to generate the first block of polystyrene and it stays living then we can add the second monomer which is a combination of styrene and this monomer and we can butadiene. So, we can get the second block now and then we can add the third again styrene to generate third block. So, we now have a first block of polystyrene then we have a combination or copolymer of styrene and butadiene in the as a middle block and we have a styrene another as a third block. So, basically we have a, a tri block copolymer. There is a very important use of anionic polymerization is that we can make a functional polymer. For example, if we this anion if we react with carbon dioxide followed by acidification we can generate acid functionalized polymer chain we can react with epoxy and followed by hydrolysis in presence of acid we can basically get wedge functional polymer and we can react with this type of monomer to make macro monomers and we can also uh, like we can react with uh, anion with say we can make 4 arm star polymer by using this uh, anionic polymerization. And we can obviously we first if you have a, a block 
and then if we add B then we can get A and then B B B as we, we have seen earlier also that we can easily make block copolymer using these anionic copolymers. So, with this I will come to this lecture uh, anionic, uh, ionic polymerization and next I will move to another uh, type of um, polymerization reaction in the next lecture.